Hi guys, Andrew from Polar Reef here. Today we're gonna talk all about clams. We'll show you the, some clams that just arrived and some protocols. We'll show you their care and what we're doing to try to improve for all you hobbyists. Clams have always been a part of Polo Reef, but taking care of them is incredibly difficult and finding exactly the elements they want to live in, it can be very challenging. As of now, you might know Andrew and you know he never lets something difficult hold him down. Instead, he looks at it as an opportunity to do what Polo Reef does best, and that's to educate. Today, Andrew continues his mission to create protocols and procedures to keeping clams. You may have seen our articles on uh, clams for rent. You may know that we've had some issues keeping a lot of our clams alive in our clam tank. Well, we're trying to figure out exactly why. We're trying to establish some protocols on wild clams. In this tank here, which is the 200 gallon tank, we have two halide bulbs running. One is a 10K and one is the radium 20K. And they're reasonably blending well. In fact, when we had both 20Ks up, it felt like there were some bleach marks on, on one of the clams. And you know that clams live shallower and like that broad daylight type of light. The basic elements he's looking at are lighting mixtures, intensity, and the quarantine process. He has two tanks set up. One is the established shallow tank in the back where the clams are already living. This tank is attached to the 17,000 gallon system, so he has to be really careful on what goes in here. The other tank is the 200 gallon tank in the lab, where new clams are first placed. With two clam tanks, Andrew has the ability to run tests and compare the results. It sounds simple, but clams being clams, it has proven more difficult than expected, and after a few attempts, it's been unsuccessful. So today, the testing continues, starting with the lights. To match the lighting to the system in the back, it took the team a lot of tries to get this right. So, what we're doing here for now is creating the same exact light and the same par in this tank and the clam tank. And the par is roughly the same at around 300, three, three and a fraction, which is pretty good for a clam. The only real difference is now is the TPG, total gas pressure, is gonna be higher in the clam tank because it's higher in the main system. This is just the regular ordinary tank with a skimmer. I think that the TGP runs at 101 versus 103 in the other tank. And we just did a zero sulfur water change to bring the sulfates down. So now that's no longer a variable. We're playing with lights. I'm playing with gas pressure. I'm trying to figure out also how to quarantine wild clams so we can have these wild clams in our tanks and not knock down clams one at a time like dominoes. So. Part one of the setup is now done and uh, we'll move on to part two. And that will be the dip and the bath and see what it, what it does to the colors, how long we can leave it in the bath, how many baths it might need. From there, I may move it into the clam tank. Clams are known to have issues. That's why people started mariculturing clams as opposed to getting them from the wild. The wild clams are much more beautiful. Uh, if we can figure out whether it's bacterial or our lights or our pressure, that would be a big thing in the hobby. As with any livestock at Polo Reef, strict quarantine and dipping processes ensure stability within all of the systems. The same goes with clams and their baths. One method Polo Reef is currently testing is taking medication in a pill form, crushing it, and placing it in a tub with the clams. The purpose of this test is to determine what medications work best. It's a work in progress. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even wait the whole hour though on the, on the, on the chlorophenicol. It's been antibiotic, you know, a few times, maybe 30 minutes, 20 minutes on the CP. Outside of giving the clams a bath, Alex the vet shows up to perform a swab and send the results to the lab. We're going to take some clams. We're going to swab them. We're going to have an antimicrobial bath and then we're going to swab them again to see how the bacterial populations change 
as with the same process as we do with the fish and the coral. Again, as we've been having some problems here, uh, the clams haven't been doing great in the clam tank. Is that because of bacterial infection, viral infection, environment? And that's what we're trying to slowly rule out. You know, Andrew's been changing the lights a little bit to see if that's making them, you know, a little more comfortable um, while I'm working on the bacterial components, make sure that there's no infections going on. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a bacterial swab. Again, these are completely, the tip of the swab is completely sterile. I'm just gonna get some of the mantle here before he closes. And we're gonna get some of the foot. Again, we'll see bacteria that we know were pathogenic in other organisms, and we can use and extrapolate that knowledge to say, hey, maybe these bacteria are pathogenic in the clams. So it takes a couple of weeks to fully get the results of these bacterial swabs. So we're gonna send these bacterial cultures to the lab. Once we get those results, we'll share them with you guys. During some of the tests, Patty arrives and Andrew briefs her on some of the changes that he made. You see, we actually blended it. You can't tell it's almost two different bulbs. And that's because we changed the backs to the, the all blues. I like the color. Me you too. Seen that yellow yeah, color. that's the 10K. But two 10Ks in this tank, they fried because of the, of the par. Yeah. So I have a radium, a 10K, they're mixing. We're doing everything. We're playing. Well, we're trying to check. Eliminate, eliminate variables. Pretty much. Now, whether we know, I mean, we can turn ozone off uh, and we can always build a degassing chamber for TGP too. But let's see, let's see what happens. All livestock needs to eat. Polo Reef always uses a combination of foods to keep their livestock happy. Three different species. Pisocrisis, Tetraselamus, and Rhodomonas. Uh, sometimes we have blends, but we're out of the blends. Uh, I prefer to, to do this anyway. Stuff the system off from the main display so the phyto stays in here a little bit. No real formula here. Shake and add. Smaller clams really need Fido. The larger clams don't, but combination of good fish poop and some Fido is great. The multi strings, a lot of them go bad after a while. You only get, they say it has 10 or 15 species. And if you look at it on the microscope, there's only a few. Uh, they'll, they'll die after 20 some odd days in the refrigerator. So the best way is individual. If you're gonna buy a strain, it's gotta become early, come refrigerated, come fresh and use it quickly. Um, and then frankly, what I do with the balance of this stuff is just throw it into uh, the LPS tanks. And this also flows through the 17,000. A lot of fish though, uh, will pick on clams, uh, even something as simple as a yellow tang. So it's best if you're gonna have a clam tank to get fish that I call floaters, chromis, cardinals, things that are gonna just be chilling near the surface and not be uh, even, even pecking on the algae of the shell. The original batch of clams that were in the 200 gallons seemed to be doing well with the changes to the lighting and the baths. So Andrew decides to move them to the established shallow tank in the back. They're all in the clam tank right now, and uh, they've all received uh, a whole tank bath, and most of them have gotten three baths. The only difference is now that that tank's going to be a little brighter, it's going to be a little wider, but so far, so good. This is going to free up the 200 gallon in the lab for, you guessed it, more clams. With the fresh batch coming in, Andrew uses his newly tested methods to see how they react. Put some in the middle, middle raw too. In the middle, the middle is gonna gonna have very similar spectrum. They're already out these clams, huh? Yeah, that's gonna be difficult. I'm gonna slant down. I think I'd rather if you're gonna put it up high like that. I'd rather put it up high on the 250 water, right there. Perfect. When will they open up? They're already starting. One of them is fully open already. They'll be they'll be out in an hour. Once the new clams are in the tank, the team is surprised and thrilled to see them opening up so quickly. This means that they're happy. Close up by saying with medication, dips and baths, 
Uh, actually, Julian Sprung in his book recommended chlorophenicol. I want to give a shout out to him. There are also parasitic things that we're using uh, CP for. We'll figure this out. Uh, the number of baths, the duration, and lighting. We keep experimenting with lighting and par and going places like Star Trek where no man has gone before. Andrew, we've got some results. Swabs? Yes, the swabs. Oh, let's, let's, let's sit down. Tell me all about it. The results from the clam swabs came back early. Alex the vet decided to share them with Andrew. So they head into the living room to debrief and discuss next steps in the clam care procedures. The results, they're pretty interesting. All right, Alex. All right. Give me the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh -huh. So in terms of the bacterial populations that we're seeing pre and post bath, we have some rudimentary findings, at least giving us a direction and you know how we potentially can proceed forward. On every single clam that we swabbed pre-bath, we were seeing two different species of vibrio, and then every- Which one is the real nasty one? So the Angeliticus is, that's actually the exact same species that we cultured and treated in the tilefish, but we can see that the known pathogens and the known vibrio are being eradicated from that bath procedure. How much chlorophenicol concentration we were using one pill per five gallons or something like that? How would you compare that concentration to the can of concentration which we were using, which was the concentration for regular fish? I want to lean more towards using the can of concentration and can of in the future because one, Every single bacteria that we have here is susceptible to canamycin. Two, it's bactericidal, meaning that it kills the bacteria. Whereas chlorophenicol is bacteriostatic, it means it just stops bacterial replication. So if we're able to kill the bacteria rather than rely on the clam's own immune system, I'd rather go down that road. So now I think the next most important step is to start determining if this proteus bacteria is pathogenic in this instance. Just because it's here, doesn't mean that it's final nail in the coffin that's killing the clams. Again, when we were doing you know, the necropsies with the clams, we were finding dinoflagellates within them, which are extremely toxic. That's another sense. issue, the dinos. Again, moving forward, I'd like to look more into the canamycin just because of how susceptible everything was and it's bacterial cytal. And that's why I think it's a better choice. I'd like to maybe possibly do, you know, swab before baths and then, you know, four, five, six, seven baths later, swab again. All right, well, we have 20 new clams on the way here. If we have that many, it might be worth breaking them up into four groups. Everyone swabbed when they first come in. Four of them are swabbed after the first bath. Four of them are swabbed after the third bath. Four of them are swabbed after the fifth bath. Four of them are swabbed after the 10th bath. And we have four different sets of we go, okay, we can see how these bacterial populations are changing each time. Now let's set that up when, yeah. when they come. Okay. And in the meantime, the dinos, we've scrubbed we put a UV sterilizer on there. We've moved some of the clams into some other tanks without dinos. Yep, yep. So we're, we're sort of spreading our wings a little bit and diversifying here. Yeah, absolutely. So Alex, I really appreciate this. And uh, this is great findings. For all of you at home uh, watching this video, you can clearly see this is the way science is made. You, you, you don't know everything and you try different dosages and different treatments and different combinations. Clearly we're learning here still, learning with a lot of other variables such as dinos. And when we figure this all out, we are gonna get back to happy clamming.